Hey, babe. Hey, what? You forgot to take out the trash. Amy, can I sit down for five minutes? No, because you never do anything for me. I built you a freaking mountain. Almost paradise. We're looking on heaven's door. The Great Pyramid of Giza. Pretty cool, huh? I bet you never think about how it's the oldest and last man standing of the seven wonders of the world. And by the seven wonders, I mean I wonder where they all went. <laughs> it really sucks that a lot of these ancient wonders aren't still around today. And it's hard for us to even prove that they even existed because all we got is some fangirling from the Greeks as evidence of maybe them being around and maybe we got some archaeological stuff. We did it! We found it! We found the arm of the statue of Zeus! Nope, nope, that, that's a sewage pipe. Uh, oh, oh god. Oh shoot, I guess I should review what the Seven Wonders were for you absolute nerds who never played Civilization and learned by Egypt building them all before you. You already have the Great Pyramid, why do you need all of them? Alright, here we go. Statue of Zeus, now very obtuse. Temple of Artemis, glad to be part of it. Colossus of Rhodes, you're as tall as its toes. Great lighthouse, shines right in your house. Pyramid of Giza, or he said he's a Giza. Muscle, Liam at Halicarnas, a big house for a dead guy, that's pretty sus. And the Hanging Gardens, it's a mountain. Built by a sim. Yeah, we're gonna talk about the hanging gardens today. Chapter. Is that a Y? A T? What is that? Oh, one! What? So the hanging gardens were supposed to have been built in ancient Babylon, which was in modern day Iraq. But they are very unique in the sense that of all the seven wonders of the world, we have no idea where they are. Well, in the sense, we have no definitive location where the gardens could be. Sure, the Greeks said hanging gardens of Babylon. Babylon, baby lion, but there are no Babylonian texts that mention the gardens, and no definitive archaeological evidence has ever been found in Babylon for these gardens. This poor lost wonder could either one, be entirely mythical, the Greeks could have just been trolling us future historians like they did with Atlantis. <laughs> Atlantis. The Rakat. The Rakat. Atlantis. B, they could have been completely destroyed in a war, which, you know, is entirely possible in a place like the Middle East. Third, they could have just been some other huge awesome garden place in another city. Like the one cool garden that we know King Sennacherib built in Nineveh, which we have all this documentation for. But that's not what I'm gonna do today. We are gonna talk about the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Babylon. Babe Elon. I'm gonna level with you guys. I'm super tired about all this historical conspiracy stuff. Why can't we just accept that people in the ancient world did math and built cool things? Well, gee golly, these here pyramids are super big and have been here for a long time. There's no way a bunch of hardworking Africans could have built this. You know what? I bet you it was UFOs and space aliens. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Sorry about that. Chapter, uh... I don't know, man, there's there's two of them now. Oh, oh, two! The story. So King Nebuchadnezzar II was what we historians call a big deal using proper technical historical terms. He was Babylon's longest reigning and most powerful monarch. And we know that because he's the guy in civilization. That's my second joke catering to the wide audience of strategy gamers. His father overthrew the Assyrians, who were, to put it mildly, a little bit insane. Once he was king, he began to prove himself as a brilliant commander and greatly expanded Babylon's territory. You might know him for being completely horrible in the Bible though, for attacking Jerusalem and destroying the temple after their defection as one of his vassals, and taking the Jewish population into captivity. Not good, Neb. Not good. I know you're up top now, but their book's gonna be pretty important later on. The legend goes that Nebuchadnezzar noticed that his wife, Queen Amatis, Amatis? Am Amitis? This is why I can't do ancient history. Amiatis. Amiatis. The legend goes that Nebuchadnezzar noticed that his wife, Queen Amiatis, really missed her homeland, which definitely might have sounded more like a first world problem to her servants serving under her. God, it's just like a horrible thing to have been forced to go to some other place and live there for the rest of your life. Like, I miss being at home. Do you ever think about that? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, Amiatis was a media studies major. I mean, a Median, and that was a place, a land in the ancient world, probably in between the mean and the mode. <laughs> In all seriousness, the Medes were an important Iranian people who helped Neb's father overthrow the Assyrians. They lived in Medea, a mountainous part of what would become Persia, where the cliffs and valleys were filled with plants and wildlife. Oh, beautiful, ah, paradise. But then she moved to Babylon, which was like the Kansas of the ancient world. Amiatis saw that everything was a flat plain, 
which I don't really get since there was already the big old Tower of Babel apparently in the background according to this painting, but hey, she really missed them mountains. So the King Neb thought that he should build her something. He decided to build her a giant structure to resemble the mountains of her homeland. Decorated with trees and waterfalls, it was both a testament to the enormous wealth of the most powerful people in the world and his love. Chapter... what is that? An M? Virgo sign? The gardens. The gardens were watered with the river Euphrates by the means of an Archimedes screw, which was used in order to bring the water up to the top of the gardens. The gardens themselves were in the shape of a square and around 50 cubits high. What? 75 feet high. The plants that could be found in the garden were European olive trees, fig trees, almond trees, date palms, athol trees. I'm sure with all those trees, it was an amazing place to be in the spring. Pollen vortex. What some are now calling the pollen vortex. The pollen vortex. Pollen vortex, or as it is sometimes referred to, a garden. It can be a little disheartening as students of history to realize that there are so many marvels that are lost to time that we will probably never see. And it's much more disappointing to have these wonders be less of an amazed sort of, you know, wonder to see these magnificent monuments of human construction to more of a debate of if they even existed or not. We study history to preserve the stories and culture of our ancestors. And it might be a very lighthearted thing, like trying to remember this mountain garden for a dude's wife, or it could be a much more difficult subject in other cases. What we should also know is that we usually don't have all the facts, and our history as we remember it needs to change to fit our newfound evidence. This is happening with one of the seven wonders, the Hanging Gardens, as it is becoming increasingly clearer that the Greeks might have been describing King Sennacherib's garden in Nineveh, rather than any garden in Babylon. The canals and dams and aqueducts with the water-raising Archimedes screw were all found there. The name, Babylon, 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 which attaches this wonder to a location, means Gate of the Gods, and was attributed to so many more cities than the Babylon we know in our textbooks. We sometimes have to ask the question, do we change the history we know to give credit where credit is due? History is so valuable to all of us, but when new things pop up, like they always do, how can we convince someone that the thing that they know might be wrong, and that they need to accept that? It could be a tough thing to debate for something like the Hanging Gardens, but it's an even tougher thing that we have to debate with all sorts of different things every Every day. It could be us discovering some new archaeological site, or us learning some new historical fact that changes our whole perspective. Not everyone is taught in the same way, not everyone knows the same facts. We're always having to change our perspective of history every day, be it in the records or in our heads. Oh!